Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here. <clears throat> it is February 24th, 2023, Friday evening at about 7-ish. It was a beautiful day out today. It was in the 80s. It was just, it was like perfect weather. And around here, all the, there are a lot of trees that bloom white been told it's some kind of an off, um, it used to be a pear tree, but it's not a, a fruit-bearing pear tree. And yes, I know, I still need to color my hair. Uh, was going to do that, but it's not going to happen tonight. Um, I'll do it tomorrow, probably. But it's just beautiful. They bloom white, and then... Out from there comes the leaves, so it's just, it'll be, it'll, it'll make you feel like you're in a wedding when, um, they, when it's fully loaded and they all start cascading off. It's just this carpet of all these white flowers. Of course, we have probably the biggest tree along this whole stretch of, of road we have in our yard. And it's just a massive tree, right? Love it to death. And it is loaded, so that's really cool. Um, a lot of things I want to go over, but first I want to say a very, very thank you to Barb and thank you to Kathy. I got, we finally got our mail released from the mail mafia, as I'm calling them. I'll tell you guys all about that in a minute, but thank you, Barb. This was such a beautiful card. I'm not going to read what it said inside because it's personal, but... It really, really brought tears to my eyes, Barbara. And the, the most beautiful thing, and you would think something like this, it means the world to me, seriously. Look what she did, you guys. Look what she did out of cross stitch. Jelly Bean is going down, and then Teresa, Charlie, Brad, and Nixie. Isn't that the most special thing ever? I'm going to do is I'm going to put a magnet on the back of this so I can put it on my fridge because I just love it. I It meant so much. I was having a, an emotional day anyway. This really hit home, and I can't thank you enough. I just, I just love it to death. And then my friend Kathy, thank you for the condolence card about Charlie, and then thank you for the just hope I got well and, you know, the surprise that was inside of it was very sweet of you. We um, did go out and had lunch um, and went to City Lake Park and uh, watched the ducks and geese and um, enjoyed the day. We went for a long drive. Uh, we went up to Tarboro and, and, and around that area. Um, we're doing a little more exploring in, in this area. With, we need to be out of the house more. Officially an old geezer, we are. Today, we went and signed up at the senior center. Taking me a long time to come to terms with that I'm not going to be in my 30s anymore. I know y'all are surprised, but it's, yeah, it's happened. I am not going to be in my 30s ever again. And I'm in, I'm, a, I'm, I'm closing in on 60 in a couple years. And I should celebrate that fact. I'm 58 years young. But it is nice being around people that have disabilities too. Um, it's for ages 50 and, and over. It was free swimming pool. Really nicely heated swimming pool. They have All of this is a free water aerobics um, and open swim. There's some line dancing. I don't think I will partake in that, but I would like to watch them. Uh, they have a beautiful workout room. They have a workout room with the treadmill, the bikes, all of that, elliptical, everything. Then they have another one that's all free weights and all of the really nice weightlifting. So, excited about that. Um, they're going to start having, you know, they, they play bridge, pinochle. And I can't remember the other one. And so I might partake in that. They don't really have a lot of other things going on yet. We did sign up to volunteer. 
Also, what better way to make friends? Brad only made a friend down there. There's a gentleman down there that Brad and him got talking and stuff. Um, ladies down there, super nice gals. Um, they already know I'm a goofball. Got to clown around with them. Um, and uh, I think I would like to start doing some crafting classes down there. You know. I would like to do what you know, like a um, where it's if whether you cross it or not cross it, whether you're crochet, knit, or loom knit, you bring your stuff down there. You know, I'll work with anybody that wants to learn how new to loom knit or some of the different stitches. I don't know them all, but I show them what I know. And you know, we meet once a week and show you know talk about yarn and and show what we're working on and stuff. I mean. Um, I could teach drawing, I could teach watercolors, acrylics, I could do oils, but I don't do oils, so, you know, I could do pastels, <clears throat> if they wanted that, um, I probably won't do the sewing, because the leg of sewing machine and stuff, um, I, I could do ribbon embroidery, um, I don't do the, the, uh, cross stitch anymore, and I will be sending that, um, the first of the month, to you, Barbara. That stuff. Um, a little behind on stuff because I've been so sick. Uh, but, um, you know, just to get people going going on stuff. They have a very nice uh, pool room and stuff. We didn't go upstairs. Um, I wasn't feeling quite up to it. Um, i got to get my strength back a little bit more. Um, pushed it a little bit too much today, actually. But, you know... It was a beautiful day out, and I was eager to get out of the house. Um, but they have a whole kitchen and stuff upstairs, a couple meeting rooms. So, I mean, there's room for growth. It's, it's getting better and better. So, um, and they also have some uh, seated chair exercises. And um, that would that's something I'm really interested in because, um, uh, you know, to help, help uh, stretch everything out and... Stuff. So, yeah, we are now officially accepting that we're getting older, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have been very sick. I know I mentioned that. I got over COVID, and then this week, though, I got the flu again, a cold and a flu. And Brad had it last weekend, and then... I came down with it with just one day, got over it. But, you know, when you've been sick for a good month or so, off and on, mostly on, it really is amazing how fast it um, depletes your energy. So, I'm going to be working on that. I want to get stronger and, uh, and uh, be able to do more endurance and stuff. So, um, always have a goal. I'm going to do a little bit of a rant. Um, it's not really a rant. It's just kind of a reflection, maybe. Today is the one-year anniversary of when my father died. Of course, I was not told when he died. I, was, I found out about six weeks later, accidentally on the Internet. I would check every so often to see... And it's kind of sad when that's how you see if your family members are, are doing okay and stuff. Um, and clearly that morning he was not, hadn't done it in a while. And, um, you know, that's how I found out that my father had passed away. You know, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even type in his name. It was the name associated with the obituary and... Up pops my dad's obituary and a picture. So, nothing I can do about that. I don't control what other people do. But it really has thrown me for a loop. Because I didn't think any family members would be that cruel. Um, I mean, people that are in prison for for murder and stuff are notified when a family member passes away. But, you know, that's on them. 
whatever. But it made me think, sometimes I feel so left out from everybody else. And I know some of you guys can um, understand where I'm coming from. Because you see other people, they have family things that they're doing. I do not. And they'll have um, uh, events like weddings, funerals, um, graduations and stuff. And then there's some of us that do not. And when you look back and you're reflecting and you're like, you feel so left out. And you, when you look back and your life is not going any, any direction that you ever thought it would be going. In some respects. And you can't, you can't remedy that. You have to accept it. And I have a hard time with that. But and I've talked about that, and I do have a hard time accepting that. And we have no control. We are not the one that really are in control of our journey ever, no matter what you believe. But psychologically, it really can kind of damage you. Brad says he knows that I've been kind of damaged ever since I found this out, you know, about my father. And it certainly did. I didn't know that a mother could be so cruel. Or my only sibling could be so cruel. But again, that's on them. And they have to live with what they've done. And they probably would tell you they're just fine. They'll tell you some made-up story and that they're just fine with their decision. No. Okay. So be it. Then I start thinking about relationships with my own children or lack of. And it's like my daughter got married. This was years ago. I don't think I ever mentioned anything to you guys. And we weren't invited. We weren't even told of it. In the same, you know, town that we live in. You know, back in Wyoming. That was very hurtful. Her sister called me up and told me. She found out through Facebook. Her sister wasn't invited either. You always kind of wonder what they've told everybody about. Well, where's your parents? But I'd always had dreamed, of course, of walking her down the aisle. Or, you know, um... I, of course, had dreamed of watching her walk down the aisle and, and all of that. Shortly after I found out that my father had passed away, within weeks, I found out my granddaughter graduated high school. They don't live very far away. They weren't invited. I wasn't even told. I always dreamed of watching her graduate high school. Again, I don't control this. Some of the stuff I feel is done just, just out of spite, just try to, to try to hurt me. Um, you know, so be it. You accomplished what you wanted to do. But when you reflect back on that day, you won't have our presence there to say, you know, my grandparents were so proud of me. I mean, when I graduated high school, my grandmother and my grandfather, my aunt and uncle, just all came. And it was a two-hour drive one way for them. And I always really appreciated that. I always really appreciated that because it meant a lot. <laughs> You know, even though I was busy doing my own thing, you know, and, and you know, the after graduation party and stuff, you know, that most high schools put on. Hey, girlfriend, hey, can we calm down a little bit? Come here. Are you being, uh, come here, come here, man, come here. No, don't go over on your back, I can't. <laughs>
Oh, you're okay. Why are you being that way? Are you okay? I didn't hurt you. You're being yelpy yelpy today. Hey, Jelly Bean, are you okay? I know. She's been real touchy lately, but she didn't heat. I hate this. But she didn't heat, so she's not feeling like a happy girl. Are you, Jelly Bean? But you were outside earlier and you had fun outside, didn't you? You was outside, you and your sister. I know. You okay? I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. But anyway, those are the kind of major things that you dream of experiencing. And, and that's things that we don't experience. We, um, all, any of the family events, we don't. It's not part of our life. We aren't invited for birthday parties and um, cookouts and, and all of that. And I miss that. And I, I really wish that was part of our life. But there's not anything we can do about it. It is whatever it is. Um, you know, not feeling sorry for myself. Coming to terms with it. That that just is not, and not everybody has that. It's just like nobody, not everybody is married. Not everybody is able to have have pets. I mean, um, you know, people. There are some people that never are married or, or experience that. You know, um, recently a family member, or in name only, got married for the fifth time. Okay, I mean, I think by the time you hit, like, your third or fourth, people just kind of, like, okay, how long is this one going to last? I mean, I hope, I hope it, I hope it works out for them and, and stuff. I don't really care, I have to be honest. But I have, the reason I'm telling you guys that this is, I've had a hard time coming to terms with that this, I thought we were moving here, we were going to be close to family, um, you know, that's what we had been asked to do, um, and lots of plans have been made about that, and then everything went south very fast, um, and, um, it is what it is, um, you know, we can't control how anybody else feels, or doesn't feel, and, but this is where we are now, and like Brad says, if for no other reason we're here for this little girl to rescue her, right? You know, her not feel the best right now. Um, and, uh, you know, Brad had a wonderful hip replacement. We do like it here. We do. I do really like the seasonal changes. I like the people. People are really nice and friendly. You know, really a very, very friendly uh Friendlier than Florida. I know. If we hadn't moved here, we wouldn't have a jelly. And who needed to have a mom and dad, right? I know. So, I'm I'm we're going to work hard on that. One of the things I realized is that part of my problem and part of my problem with my depression, and I don't want to go on stronger medication if I don't have to. Nothing wrong if you have to. I just, you know, it's so hard when you switch medication. And um, I really don't want to go on anything stronger. I don't want to feel like a zombie again. Is I look and I'm way too isolated. I stay home. Now, I have some agoraphobia. I always have had. Um, but I stay home way too much, way too isolated. I don't really have any any close friends here. I have a few friends, but they're more like acquaintances, but I don't really have any. Are you comfortable? I don't have really have any friends. Um, I don't have any outside interests, and I need to have some. I need to have something that isn't all involved in my health and Brad's health and, you know, things that are going on, you know, in this house and stuff. Um, hi. Mm, I know. I love you. I love you, baby girl. Um, I need to have some outside interests. Um, like today, it felt so good just to be. I was chatting with the two ladies that that were there at the senior center, and um, we were having fun. 
where I was chatting with a gentleman, he was having fun. You know, when you only have one other person to talk to, sometimes you run out of stuff to talk about, really. You're together all the time. So, I want to, I'm working on that. My first step was joining the senior center. Um, there's a few other things that we might look into, like there is a, a pottery class that I don't know if it's, it's probably not going to start again until probably next fall. I think it's through one of the local colleges, and you can take a pottery class, and Brad's even interested in that, with the pottery well in the whole bit. Uh, so that could be fun. Um, you know, just getting more involved in things. That's why I went ahead and said I was interested in volunteering. I can work the front desk. I can help with the mailing and stuff. So, um, and Brad also had me mark. I did his form for him because, you know, his hand was shaking real bad today. So they would have a hard time reading what he wrote. So I normally do that for him. And that he was interested in doing some volunteering too. Um, so I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on being more active. We do want to start doing some fishing and um, just getting more active and not sitting back here in this bedroom, you know, kind of wishing I wasn't, wasn't around at times, you know, not that I was going to do anything to unalive or anything, but sometimes you wish that a big black hole would swallow you up. That's not healthy, and that's not good. And I can't expect anybody else to be um, responsible for my happiness than myself. People are always going to do, I feel like, there's always going to be somebody doing something real shitty to you. Sadly, that's just the way it is. But that's life, and we have to overcome it. Sometimes I think I'm a little lucky because I have gone through so much that I am pretty tough about stuff anymore. I mean, you have to be in order to survive. You have to be in order to um, be just you and your husband facing everything, you know, alone. My big inhaler. Look, Rebecca. So nice. Get yourself one of these girls. It's just so nice. Even come with a little keychain thing. It's nice. <sighs> um. Anyway, that's this is allergies right now. Was the nose thing. Um. So. I'm going to become more positive. Sometimes, you know, you, run, you get in that trap where you're just feeling kind of negative about stuff. And I don't like that. I don't want to be negative about stuff. So I'm going to work on being more positive. I'm going to work on, um, you know, it's been a hard month. It's been a hard month. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, um, Brad's going through some medical stuff and, and, like I said, we're still not ready to really talk about that. He's got an appointment to see another specialist, have some more testing done. Um, next month, I think it is. I had to move my appointment. I was supposed to see the doctor next week on the 1st. I had to move it because there's no way I could really... You know, they want you to be symptom-free and everything for a whole week, both of you. So, rescheduled that because I couldn't get in to do lab work. And, you know, it's really not any point. So, um, but my life is mine, and I only get this one life, and nobody has the right to destroy it. I've always let people really... I put too much stock into what other people thought of me, what other people felt about me, and let them treat me in horrible ways. I grew up with a very sadistic woman who would cut you down, very abusive emotionally, verbally, sometimes physically. I grew up in a house where I would hear my father say the most horrible things to my mother, especially about her weight. Um, 
you know, it was not a confidence builder. I was not the favorite child. That's very clear. And that's okay, too. Um, you know, it's a roll of dice what you get in life. But I'm a survivor. And I will survive this and overcome and rock this. Um, with what we're going through with what with what Brad's going through medically is is pretty substantial and that was hard to kind of grasp and get a hold of. And um it made you do really some thinking about getting things better in position like that we need some life insurance that we need to have a plan of what would happen if if either one of us was gone. Financially, he would be fine. Me, not so much. So, you know, you need just some long-range planning. It has also made me take a lot of stock in what I already have. I'm at the point in time in my life, and I know a lot of you people are, or maybe you have some in your family that is, where you don't want to collect any more stuff. I want to reduce the amount of stuff I have. I want to make things as easy in this house as possible. I want to, I don't want to collect any more stuff. Now, certainly, if you have some, some, some heads laying around, like Halloween prop heads or anything like that, I would love them, but I'm not going to buy any more. And if you send me one, I probably will, it will get rid of one I have. Mine, I, I've lost some over the years. They've just kind of disintegrated and stuff. Um, those I do have in my bedroom here with my roses. <laughs> and Brad's got some dragon stuff in here, too. Um, like these witch hats, you see? They're from Dollar Tree, you guys. Years ago. Yeah. Um, but I want to go through my clothes and... And I have already, but go through them again because there's some clothes I just do not wear and I will not wear. Why keep them? They're just taking up space. Um, I want to streamline my craft up better where it's easier to get to, easier to use, um, and uh, all of that. I definitely always will keep donating hats as part of me. Um, but it's time to kind of look at I wouldn't want to pass away and have somebody walk into a mess. We did talk with sister, Brad's sister for a while tonight. Love that woman to death. She and I have a long history of hanging out together when she was younger and while well, I was younger too. And, I mean, we're back before my youngest child was in school even. And um, we talked to her briefly about, hey, you know, we don't have anybody for emergency contact. And we don't have anybody if something happened to us. And would it be okay if you and she said yes? That's a big relief. And so, you know, I watch some of these extreme cleaning and places and stuff where they'll be hired by a family member or even somebody, you know, an apartment manager to come clear out an apartment. And they just, you know, they end up throwing everything away. I don't want that to happen. Because even if they don't, you know, I won't. I would want her to come in and, and, and my niece and nephews um, and get what they want. And then the rest they would like to have donated. Like, if you don't need the dishes, donate them because, you know, Salvation Army, Goodwill, whatever, they can always, you know, use that. Um, why throw away something that somebody else can, can use the needs? So, um, it's like silly things like certain blankets. I would want donated to the animal shelter. Um, that kind of stuff. If you don't have people to hand things down or you've already handed them down, the most important thing, which is what we already did, um, what do you do with the rest? So that's when you start thinking. You know, we want to have some will done. We want to get it all laid out, all of that. It would just give us peace of mind. Um, you know, have everything done. Of course, we, we don't want to have any services. I don't want any announcement in the paper. The people that are really in my life will know. 
and they will just reflect on some some happy memories of us together, and that would be great. Uh, of course, you know, we just want to be cremated and stuff. Brad feels the same way. But, um, what are you doing, Jelly Bean? Uh, I mean, we're just kind of to that point where it's like, you know, I've collected enough, and we purged so much stuff when we moved from Wyoming out here. And then you look around, and we moved out here with literally just a half of an RV of stuff. was all we had in the whole world. And then, you know, we've got a whole house full of stuff again. And it's like, I'm not, you know, I won't just go to a thrift store just to find something to buy. I've got to have a purpose for it. If I bought it, does that mean I'm going to replace something I already have with it? Um, you know. I'm mindful of that. I don't want to collect too much of anything. Um, you know, so that's what we've been on our mind and stuff. It is getting kind of prepared for the future more. And, you know, getting healthier. Because, ugh, you know, this flu hangs out forever. It does. And... While I have one, I'm going to work more on, on uh, reducing and then quitting smoking again. What else was I going to talk about? I think that was about it. I could show you guys hmm, a couple of hats I just finished. And yes, I clean all these and, and everything that before I ever donate them. Make sure they don't smell like cigarette smoke or anything. So, I just finished this one the other day. Cassie, this is all yarn that you gave me again. You probably recognize that yarn. Except for this gray here is stuff I had. Dark gray. But yeah. So there's one. Now this hat is all yarn that Cassie, scrap yarn Cassie sent me recently. Uh, two. And, um, I had made a yarn ball out of the red and black and the browns. And then, and I think that was you donated that to me some time ago. But then you had donated this gold recently. And so, that's what made into this hat. I don't know why I love making hats. I'm going to make, I'm going to take a small break from making hats to donate. Because I want to make some, for some, some... Family members that are still in Wyoming where it's so cold right now, y'all. They get hit hard with that winter storm. Crazy cold, 22 below zero and just, ah. Uh, and, um, you know, I know my friend Kathy got hit. They got hit. They, they uh, got hit pretty hard with snow and stuff, too. Um, so, going to be doing that. It won't take me that long. You know, I got a small hat started right now. I don't have anything really to show to, to speak of it. Ugh. I'm using the rest of this gold yarn. It was kind of knotted up right now, but yeah, for the rim. And then I think I'm going to do the rest of it in this with some white. I'm really eager to play with this. I love all the colors in it. So, um, yeah, I think they'll look nice together. So, anyway, that's what I've been doing. I haven't gotten into painting because I've been so darn sick. I did get to exercise the bike, do the exercise bike a couple of times. There we go. Cigarette went out. That's okay. I'll mess with that later. Um, got to ride the exercise bike a couple of times. Um, I'm going to call Monday and schedule for another uh, steroid injection in his shoulder because it's gotten where I, I can't hardly move it again. You know, so first shot did wonders. The second shot really didn't do much, but I'm going to take my chance again. I know I was eligible starting in December, so I'll call, and it's about a month to six weeks before they can get you in, so I'll do that. It's always nice. 
I enjoyed that. So that's about all that we really got going on in our corner of the world. I mean, you know, um, thinking more about how we want to lay out what we're going to garden. We're going to do container gardening again. And my friend Cassie sent me some wonderful seeds. I'm excited about those. Thank you again so much. Um, it's nice to share something like that with 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 people. Um, like I said, I want to get some more house plants eventually. Low on the priority list. Everything is costing so much, as, as we all know. That I don't know. Brad asked me if I was going to get some uh, um, flowers this this spring. You know, some potting. You know, some flowers that are already you know ready to be potted and stuff. Uh, bedding plants. There we go. And I said, I don't know what's the price of stuff. I don't know. I would like to get a few and then do seeds too. But I don't know. I might be just doing seeds with the price of everything. So, um, I'm feeling better about life. I'm determined. Once you figure out that you aren't, you aren't to be the blame of everything, every hatred thought anybody has about you. I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means. I'm not, but um, I don't deserve a lot of the stuff that's happened. But when people think you're weak, it's almost like they sniff it out on you and, and, you know, they prey on the weak. So, you know, it is what it is. And all you can do is rectify that and say, hey, no, you know, I deserve to have a happy life. You know, I deserve to enjoy life and enjoy, you know, crafting and enjoy good friendships and, you know, sharing things and you know, maybe I'll get to experience some of the things I want to experience, like, you know, um, it doesn't have to be my family to, to witness, you know, a young person graduating and stuff. I mean, you know, a lot of people, their friends are their family, and that's very much the way it is for us. I mean, yes, we have, we have, I do have family. I have, I, I count her as my sister, you know, which is, you know, which is, Brad's sister, and I count my friend Carol as my sister. My friend Cassie is, is, is like a mom figure to me in so many ways, a mentor. Let me help look up to. I love hearing the stories, you know, her stories and her sharing things going on in her life and stuff. Barbara, you know, is, is a really sweet gal. Rebecca and I, have been, we've been friends for a long time. Um, you know, so many other wonderful people. You know, some people will, will exit your life, and that's okay, you know. Um, I'm sure you guys probably are wondering, because they haven't said anything about Leanne, and, uh, you know, her life has changed, and my life has changed, and uh, we just don't really... Um, our journey doesn't align like it used to. She's busy with her life. And and I'm I'm happy for that she is, and you know, people sometimes friendships last a lifetime. Sometimes it's short lived, and you know, or it's me medium. I mean, you just enjoy what it is for the time it is, and you know, I like said there's no ill will or anything. I just you know we just you know kind of drifted apart, and that's just how life happens. I mean, life changes, and yes, I have a bug bite right here. Not sure what it is. It kind of itches. It's bumpy. But um, life changes and you just enjoy the memories. You know, so um, I'm going to get off here. Brad's making puppy dinner. And then he's going to make our dinner. And I'm going to um, strip our beds, remake them, clean his bedroom and the bathroom and stuff while he does that. So then we can have a nice evening. Maybe we'll watch some... We finished season one of that Carnival Row. If you like kind of like um, fantasy fiction, you'll like it. It's great. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because I'll let you read the thing and decide if you want to. Um, but, you know, if you like that kind of stuff, you know, like, you know, fairies and that kind of stuff, uh, you'll like it. Um, we do. And beautifully written, very well done. It's on Amazon Prime. If you're a Prime member, it's free. Um, 
and so we're getting ready to start season two. And then the um, National Parks uh, limited doc document documentaries is on Netflix, and that's beautiful. We've only watched a couple episodes of that, but it's beautiful. And like I said, I'm not a fan of Barack Obama politically, but he does a beautiful narrating on this as a person and stuff, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, do you guys see one other thing? Do you see Jimmy Carter's in the hospice? Bless his heart. I, like so many people, didn't think he did much as a president. But he has been a very big humanitarian and done so much work. But he's 98. They haven't said exactly what he's ailing from. You know, he beat brain cancer and everything. Um, but he's entered hospice, and they're t doing hospice at home, so, bless his heart, 98 years old, so, we've been watching the At Alex Murdoch trial, y'all, you want to see somebody who's doing a really great coverage on that and giving you more stuff, first off, 48 Hours has, uh, it's on YouTube, um, has, uh, it's called The Murdoch Mysteries. And that's an hour-long program. Really informative. Also, Christina Randall has a YouTube channel on YouTube. And she has been covering this and really giving a lot of information. But, y'all, man. Well, after I watched 48 Hours last night, I'm like, holy crap. Man. And then I was watching some of the trial yesterday. Because Alex Murdoch was on the stand. And, oof. He's an evil man. I mean, the things he's done, all the money he's stolen and stuff, wow. So, yeah. Hopefully we'll get back to True Crime Fridays. We want to take this channel and, and do more with it. That's one of the things. One of the things that we get more active and stuff. I probably won't take you guys down to Senior Center because I don't want to film other people. That would make them uncomfortable. I don't want to do that to them. Um, you know, we'll take you guys along for more drives as we discover more waterways and stuff. Um, of course, if we're doing stuff like fishing. So, anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm hoping you have a great weekend. Um, we will. Hey, we're on the right side of the grass still, so, you know, I loved my dad. And I always will. I will forever miss him. And, um, love him. I know he's in a happier place. And, you know, you just hold on to the good memories. Other people can try to erase me from the family, which makes no sense. You want to erase me from the family, but you list me in the obituary. Doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. I'm not playing that game. I'm too old for that. I'm not playing games anymore. You know. So, I mean, I am who I am. And if, if people don't like it, then they need to not just be around me. So, you know, if I don't like somebody, I'm just not around them. I just, you know. But anyway, I love you guys. And I hope you have a great weekend. And if you're in Path of the Storm, stay warm, stay safe. If you're enjoying the spring weather, enjoy it. It was important for me to get outside today because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Um, and then hoping Sunday I can get outside and do some more yard work. We have a bajillion leaves. Just We got to, I don't know when our lawn guy is going to come by and start doing stuff, but we got a bajillion leaves. So, oh, I want to tell you guys, one, you see you guys almost got rid of me. Do not ever buy a home from True True Homes, Clayton Homes, because they do not hold their warranty. We've been fighting with them since we moved in, right? Shortly after we moved in, the roof started leaking. All down the wall, flooring. The entire floor in the kitchen, the linoleum started baffling and rolling. The, all of the drawer catches in the kitchen let go. 
very poorly made. Very, very poorly made. Very slapped together. Uh, so we've been fighting with them. Well, their final ruling was that supposedly the guy that came by to look at at um, the roof, first he said he had fixed it. Then the latest story now is he came by and checked and there was no roof damage. There was nothing. He came in our home. We showed him the water damage. He saw the damage on the roof. They're not going to fix anything. So, part of the reason we bought this trailer was because it was supposed to be under warranty. We know at our age and stuff and with our finances, we really can't afford to be putting a lot of money into a place. So they're not going to fix anything. So, if you're finding that you're going to buy a new mobile home or anything, don't believe them about the warranties. Because they're not going to fix anything. What they did was they purposely waited until everything was out of warranty. Even though we notified them right away about everything. They waited and waited. It's our word against theirs. And if you have any issues with anybody, film it. Record it. That you're only backing. I will never ever let anybody else in my home again to do any kind of repair work or look at anything without recording them. Because, you know, now we're stuck with, you know, so it's not over. And the male mafia, okay, Postmaster's not in at all this week. First day we call, they don't know where our mail is. Okay, we even go down to the annex. They don't know where our mail is. So the next day, we talk to the gentleman that, that works down there and, and well because I got tired of holding it and it wasn't very much mail at all but um, I had two tiny packages one was our new COVID test because you know we used all the COVID testing we had um, and then I had a bottle of supplements let's see I, can't, I don't know where they are now but anyway it's my um my enzymes, I have to take my dairy enzymes because of being at lactose intolerant. The bottle's not any bigger than, hmm, I know it's in here. Oh, here it is. This is the bottle. So it was in a tiny package, right? It was it and the cards and some other junk mail. But they said they couldn't hold it. So they made the carrier take it to the cluster box, which we don't have a key for, never have had a key for it, because we were grandfathered in because of being disabled that we didn't have to have the cluster boxes. We have a mailbox. So then they get a new postmaster who decides that she is on a power trip. She's going to fix everything and decides all of a sudden that, no, we have to do this the cluster box and we're like wait according to ADA law you have to make reasonable accommodations and stuff so we even got letters from the doctor <laughs> turned them in but she hasn't made a ruling because she's not been in the office all week so yeah but we couldn't even get our mail and then so it was supposed to be yesterday that the when the postal carrier came out this way, she was supposed to give us a call and we would go down to the cluster boxes and she would hand us our mail. So like I said, we couldn't get in there. We don't have a key. No, she decided not to do that. She's going to take all the mail, bring it over to the annex. We could pick it up there tomorrow. So that's what we did this morning. <laughs> Crazy. You know, but I call it the mail mafia. So, you know... And then, I don't believe anybody when they say they're going to call you back, business-wise, because they never do. It's like, ugh. So, anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember, do something nice for somebody else. Then do something nice for yourself. And, um, remember, I love you guys. I really do. Um, it was so touching, Kathy and, and Barbara. It was really sweet. But I was like, there, I'm like, Aw, you know, because it's so sweet. I mean, 
Cassie sends me cards, and I love all your cards. I really do. I mean, I love, if any of y'all want to send me a letter or a card, I love, I love that. That means so much, um, you know, because uh, I know my content's not that thrilling, and I sometimes, like, kind of hesitate to do a video because I'm like, these guys, people are going to get bored to death. So, um, but there's some of you guys that seem to like it, and so I, I probably will do more of it. You guys are very near and dear to me but um if you would like and subscribe share with your friends um you know i think we all have words of wisdom to share with each other don't ever think to any story you're going to tell me is an interesting because i love hearing stories kathy will tell you that kathy tells me shares with me stories and i just i love them they're so endearing and stuff when somebody shares a story with you, it gives you a glimpse into their life and a, possibly a different viewpoint, one you hadn't thought of before. And they'll say something and all of a sudden it'll click and it's like, yeah, that's right. You know? So, anyway, love you guys. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend and I will talk to you later. Even though he's not back here, we'll all say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad! Bye! Bye, guys. Bye, Brad. <laughs>